Gilbeck. Uh, <coughs> migration pattern. So they live in the in the Western Cape at about four to six kilos and say about eight kilos. They will decide to migrate up Durban together with the sardines, they're hunting the sardines. And um, that's obviously a food source on their on their uh, migration. When they come to our coast on the sardines disappear then they would um, they would be uh, in Berry, probably in October somewhere around there, September, October, and they actually spawn in KZN coast. And then they say that they they migrate back down to Cape, which is true, but they also there's some of them that stays down here. Um, that join the local shoals that actually migrate out to the deeper waters. And then, if you've got three days in the, in the summer and you've got three days of, of northeaster, they would come in to the shallowest, which is about 100 meters, 200 meters, and you can catch them on, on the deeper reefs. Sometimes they come up to the 70 meters as well. So, we get Gilbeck right through the year, but we mostly target them. When the juveniles are here, the, the younger ones are here, the four, six, up to eight kilo. Uh, I haven't seen much 14 kilos a year in Durban. So that's a migration pattern. How we know that uh, the what's name is here is you watch your, your internet, what the guys are catching, together with all of your, your um, friends will tell you, and social media together with uh, what comes out in the, what's, what do you call it, the, um, the fish shops, you know, when they start selling these fish off, and you can hear by them where they're coming from, but in the eyes you can see whether it's a local fish here at the site, or whether it is a what's the uh, professional guy will tell you, so forth. So, there's basically, when it comes to Gilbeck, you work on a network with a lot of friends and you must make sure that they don't lie to you and stuff like that. So, um, I, I just have the story, if you lie to me, I'll never speak to you again. You know, it cost me a lot of money to run out on a lie. So, your, your network is the other one and the other one is you physically fish for them. Now, I also use a network together, I physically fish for these fish. So, what I would do is I would run one day, I will run south, one day I'll run deep, and one day I'll run north. When I do the, when I run that, then I'll do shallow in the same direction. I'll do deep and I'll do shallow direction. Some days it's possible for me to do a run on the north in the deep and come back in, in the shallows. You know, uh, when we're talking about shallow shallows, I'm talking about mid-reef area, that line there. And when I'm talking about the deep, then I'm talking about Ben Quirum John Ross, Steve Swart, Ben Quirum John Ross, Rao, <coughs> all the way up, um, Rao 400, those, all those marks to, um, to tabletop, from tabletop, inside wall, inside wall, uh, wall, uh, right up till, uh, what do you call it, uh, the spike, from the spike will go inside and uh, do honey hole. From on the old big bump and so forth, and then I'll come the line down to Middle Reef and I'll run that. There's a portion in between there on the Benita side where there's actually three depth line that you will work. And if you're doing the south, we'll start off with an <coughs> with a with an eight fathom bait spot right right here by um, the Bluff Blood Reef, and then we work that section all the way um, to the Acid Park Acid Park Twenty Ledges all the way that way, then come out. You can do the mid, mid section, which would be Ilobo. Uh, Ilobo is a very well-known uh, cracker mark that stretches down to, to basically between, on the edge of the um, uh, well boy area, uh, restricted area from there. And then um, the outside, you can do the 80 meter line there, know where the guys normally catch the steer and so forth, so run all the way up there, church ground, from 
outside of Ilova, all the way down uh, Warners is Bingo, and then um, on 80, 76, 80 meter line. Coming up uh, Church Ground, <coughs> Southern Ledges, uh, Cooper, uh, Cooper, Cooper Ledges, and then um, obviously all, the, all of your wrecks. You will always try all of your wrecks to see whether, whether they uh, there. That's the easy way. The, the wrecks are all on your chart. So they very accurate. You know exactly where the wreck is. You must just know which wreck is which wreck. So now the difference comes into whether you are targeting uh, on anchor or whether you you're going to going to drift. So if you work in church ground and so forth, church ground is on the, on the southern side of church ground. There's a bump. Now on that bump you'll anchor. So they will be on that what's new if it's a northeaster. If the northeast is blowing, if you're fishing church ground, the northeast will blow, then you fish the bump which is on the southern side. The the northern side of it is quite a long stretch. It's about a kilometer stretch. You know, that, that whole reef runs all the way up to basically to Durban. You know, it's just that certain areas got a little bit bump and certain areas of ledges. So the the anchoring situation is you, you will anchor on the lee side of a, of, of a watch them. I would always, on the ledge, I would put an anchor. When I'm fishing on an anchor, um, it's important to draw the fish towards you. You know, live bait is always your, your, your best bait. Please, live bait, that's it. You know, but the fish works on three ways. It works on smell, sight, and vibration. <coughs> so, a live bait will give you sight and vibration. A dead bait will give you sight and smell. So if you haven't got proper, 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 proper bait, you know, that's being called fresh and so forth, I like my mind being old bait. You know, the yellow bait works really good. You know, moss bunker, yellow moss bunkers, yellow uh, uh, mackerel, yellow sardines, if I can keep it, you know, tied together. Um, it seems like maybe for me that that works very well so if you're putting on an anchor you need to pull the fish towards you so you cut cutlets you put a, a cutlet on the shank and you put your sardine on it and sometimes when we are fishing when we are early there then i would suggest that us use three hook trays four hook trays five hook trays and put some squid on and um so, blocks of sardines on all the hooks so the smell will come once you knock the first sardine after the first uh, 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 heel back then um, you've pulled the shell towards you then you start with your live bait and your sardines and so forth that's on anchor <coughs> so certain places you won't put anchor because all of your eggs is sand around them so your anchor don't hold on to them and deep reefs you know it's 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 just the hassle to put your sinker right on the spot. Uh, so most of the, the deep reefs you, you would, um, the deep wrecks, and the wrecks you would, you would drift onto them. You know, the gilder glass sitting around them and so forth. So that covers the, the, the um, anchoring and drifting. Drifting also, I mean, John Ross, Ben Quirum, Ben Quirum is very nice to put on the anchor, I don't fish Ben Quirum. Steve Swartz is an absolute, you've got to put an anchor on there. Steve Swartz is an old, um, uh, was a rum runner. Uh, in the olden days, she ran, uh, in America, she ran a rum up and down the coast, smuggling, and came to Durban as a shark processing plant, and then she went to uh, Mozambique, and also for shark processing, and when she came down to be uh, scrutineered again for a COF, um, they scrapped the boat and she was sank that side. So this boat has got three masts on it, you know, like an old Catharina. So you, if you're going to drift there, you're going to get stuck. That, that place there, you've, you've got to sit an anchor. That and Ben Quirum, you put an anchor. The rest of them, you can drift on that line. Ben Quirum, Maggie's and so forth. Maggie's nice for, for, for cracker as well so you, it's a nice place to put an anchor and so forth but obviously your your uh, rules coming to in, 
to affect here, you know, the un unspoken rules. First one on the spot determines what you do there. So if the first guy's there and is putting anchor, you can't go there and, and drift around side him. You are just being a plain, plain arsehole about the situation. If um, the first first guy drifts there, you can't go and put anchor there. You know? It's a gentleman's game, this, and um, we expect everybody to be gentlemen. Okay, so the question arises, how do I find him? Um, <laughs> first thing, at the end of the Dorado season, we start looking for them. So May, May, May month, I will start looking at the, the bait shops, see if there's any sardines that came through. There's a lot of bait uh, people. Uh, there's one that I know sells to a certain bait shop. So I'll have a look whether he brings in the tail sods. You know, the, the other sods I realize the sod is different, you know. So if I find this, the sods, the first sods that I know, the sardine run has already started because the sardine run starts much, much earlier than what the people think, you know. Um, they come through in the deeper line and we don't see them. There's pilot shoals that comes through. And these pilot shoals um, starts attracting the gilbeck. The gilbeck comes, the residential ones comes from the deep. They come in, have a look. And um, then later on with the main shoals, just before the main shoals, the, the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the smaller ones comes in, the six kilos and so forth. So. I'll be watching the guys off the beach, what they are catching, when they start catching the tigers. Your whales, the appearance of the whales is, is God's way of showing us, you know, it's the season for tigers and gilbeck. If you see your first whale, then you know it's full time, you know, uh, the water temperature is right, there should be dog and gilbeck around. And then you, st you, s you start going over these reefs when you are tra traveling you know the line that they go, you travel all over your Gilbeck spots. If you're going fishing bottoms, you travel over them. See, if you see big showings and so forth, bigger fish showings and so forth, and you will pick them up if you keep on that ledge and you watch your fish find them constantly. So I travel at, at a speed of say about 30, 35 k's an hour when I'm running. Uh, my sounder handles it because it's midships and I've got a clear view of my sounder. So I run fast over these reefs. If I see something, then I'll run, uh, just make a note of it. And then the next day, early morning, I run there first and try and get some kill if I get killed there. Then I'm in the game. Then the season starts for me. Um, so I will go one day south, one day north, one day deep, and and try the mid, mid reef area, different areas, flats, inside the flats, there's fast what's them places that you can can try there. There's probably about 300 different um, Gilbeck spots that you can visit and, and, and see whether they they are here. But yeah, how do I find it? I look at my fish finder, look at the bait shop, see whether they're here, and then practical go down and see. You know, um, before the sardine run, they come from deep, uh, so I try all my deep rigs first early, uh, deep, if I'm talking deep, it would be 100 meters and more, 200 meters, the, the three places on the 200 meters, I will try them first, those are my, my bankers, um, there's hardly anybody that's got the, the 200, 210, 215 meter marks, I think there's only three of us that's got the one, and the other two, it's only me, so if I find them there, I know I can, I can wait a couple of weeks, two weeks, then I can fish 66, 78, 85, and so forth. So 85 has taken a knock through the years because it is a depth that the fish will come in the summer. So the breeding stock for 85 has been killed, unfortunately, people. First, um, another one that's going to take a big knock is the Otis uh, 54. She, uh, I see a lot of guys fishing in the summer on there as well. So these, these places are, are getting knocked properly. But yeah, that's your indication. Um, once the bigger shoals comes in, then it's shoal after shoal after shoal. You know, you've got to see what depth the sardines come through. When you're out on the ocean, you see the sardines. You see it right. You can see the difference between the shoal with its mackerel or what. What the situation is. The sardines, the sardines got a distinctive way of swimming. You know that the sardines are there. They're coming down on the depth line, whether it's 65, whether it's 
quite slim, but the main shells, they tend to come in on on the depth line of the of the sardines. You know, so the sardines are shallow, they come up in the shallow. Once the sardines disappear, they do their back run in the deep. So we find them right up till December in the, in the 76, 78, anything from 65 upwards. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> time to target these fish. Sun up, sun down. That's your main watch them. So be there before the sun comes up, say about an hour before that, to um, say about nine o'clock, you will try them. And then uh, high tide, hour before high tide to hour half, or after high tide. Um, if you are fishing midday, uh, they tend to like fillets better, normal red fillets, uh, cutlets, and so forth. Once you've got them on the bite, you can use sardines. Your preference on bait, um, live mackerel, live mozzies, that's your top bait. After that, it would be a bait that was caught, but not frozen, so bloody and so forth. And then after that, it will be a smelly bait. That would be a moss bunker or a, a sardine or mackerel. Obviously, mackerel is better than, than mozzy and then sardine. Um, I normally leave them out for a day, freeze them, defrost them again, freeze them again about three times and then turn yellow. I like the yellow bait. And after that, you will have your normal sardines, five kilo sardines that you buy in the shop. That's your bait preferences on that, you know. Right, so um, a lot of guys asking about glow sticks and, and glow skirts and so forth. Yeah, those things work, but it attracts the sharks. The sharks on the glow sticks, the sharks uh, gives you a good eye. Uh, um, the Jamazitas, they they very nice because it gives you on a dead bait. It gives you movement as well. The tentacles, you know, the uh, the gilbert, uh, also it's a night feeder. You can see that because of the lines on the side of the body and the, and the spots, uh, like a dog and a snapper and the garrick as well. You know they would feed on, on on vibrations, they can feel the vibrations through their skin. So uh, Yamazita is always a yes, yes. On, on my charters, I just use normal, you know. What do you do when um, the fish is there and they're not eating? Then obviously you will go on a cutlet, bring them on the bike, put a cutlet of, 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 of sardine on, then your dead bait. If you have a live bait and the diver just, just pin holes it, then that's an indication that you must change immediately to to sardine bait, you know, dead bait. They don't want anything alive, they will rather eat something live. You go cut it and you go onto your, onto your dead bait sardine. Then um, does a fish find a, a fix to watch them? If you're on the on the Gilbeck Reef and you come down your your drift line and so forth, when you see your fish and so forth, once you stand to where the fish is, you switch your finder off. It does affect them. The, you'll find that you catch one, two, two, and the shoal spreads out. You know, so when you're sitting on the anchor, uh, fish finder off definitely uh, it does affect them. It spooks them away, it calls the sharks. So. Yeah, you would you would drift, get your drift, drift on, make sure that you've marked every time you go on, you mark it every time. So you'll get a cluster when they just sit in according to the drift with your boat. Uh, where should we go first? If you go, if you go to the south, you would you would you would start your closest reef. I mean, why why start furthest? You know, start your cross the sweep, do a couple of downs, have, have a look. First, have a look. If you don't see them, then bypass. You know? But that I did explain in the previous what's then. Circle look and normal looks, that's your preference on the way that you strike. If you are a guy that strikes in the reel, a jail is made for you. If you're a guy that just likes picking it up slowly, circle look is your preference. So um, you've, you've got to establish who, who fishes what way. The way they take, the gilback will, will take you two bumps, boom, boom. Uh, that's if they're eating vigorously, if they're eating, sometimes they just bang you. you know, and then you get the times when they're shy, 
they will actually suck your bait you know, feels like they are sucking it in if that happens then you've you've got enticed them also same story block bait and then your your sardine that you you will take also if you're on a place where they're not eating then you've got to force feed them you know put a piece of cutlet on and they will come onto the bite once they're on the bite go off the cutlet and take the what's name uh, the movement pattern on a on a ridge as i said they move according to probably about five five k's an hour if there's no bait on the on the spot and so forth uh, it takes them basically a day to to sort the bait out and catch what they can catch and then they start moving on i found that they move about five k's a, a, a day some people will tell me no but they catch every day in the same place those are shoals that's coming through um, each and every time but the migrating shoals they they move properly you know your resident what's them they will stay your eight kilo fish if you find them on on any of the reefs uh, they there they that's that's their home